I think uh, most of the things or a number of things that uh, I'm going to say today have already been said, but I think the power is in repetition, so I'm just going to say them again because they are really important uh, things, especially when you want to start with Axon. Um, so what I'm going to tell today is about, yeah, I'm going to tell about one of our products that we have built. Um, it's using Axon. It's not a really, yeah, standard use case of Axon, I would say, uh, but I'll go, go deeper into that later. Um, if my clicker is working. It's apparently not, but... All right, the agenda for today, well, I have 30 minutes. Um, I'll do a short introduction, then I'll tell about something about the product, then I'll dive into the history of why we started using Axon, um, about yeah, some of the, the benefits and also some of the challenges. Um, then I'll be looking ahead at what our future is going to be look, going to look like, probably, and then there's some room for questions, hopefully, if I'm not too slow. Um, introduction. Who am I? Um, I'm the chief technical architect at Wangini. Um, well, I'm a creator and software ent enthusiast. So to say, in my free time, I like to cycle a lot and uh, play water polo. Well, that's basically who I am. Um, then the company I work for. Uh, we were founded in 2011. Um, we currently have over 25 customers in uh, about seven countries and more than 20 million uh, uh, yeah, active users. Um, as you can see, um, we are mostly in the insurance and banking world. Um, you can also see that at the customers that we have. Um, <clears throat> some, of, some of the customers are kind of odd, I would say, like uh, NS or CoolBlue. They're not in the financial services industry, but they also find our solutions interesting. Um, then, a little bit about the Wangini SIM. It's a, a customer identity and X management uh, solution. Um, who knows about what Siam is? But please raise your hand if you knew, have ever heard about Siam. Well, that's not a lot. That's what I figured. So what is Siam? Siam is like truly get knowing your customer, um, getting your customer online as in from, a lot of insurance companies have problems with, uh, or problems have a challenge that they uh, have a lot of customers, but they don't have online accounts. And they want to interact with their customers. Uh, our product, our CM product, is helping them to get their customers online and to, um, well, basically maybe migrate from their old systems towards a new system where they can actually interact with their customers and do self the customers let the customers do self-service, password resets, etc. All these kind of things which are kind of authentication related. So, um, yeah, from a, from a functional perspective, this is kind of what our application looks like. Um, as you can see, a lot of a lot evolves around uh, the authentication flow or authentication, basically. Um, it all starts with um, account sign up. Um, a lot of customers, a lot of our customers already have um, well existing account stores. They want to migrate them into a single store because we also uh, they want to uh, have a single uh, bill, a single uh, image of their customers. Um, and therefore, we need to do all kinds of technical integrations, et cetera, right? So that's, it's, it's really a technical application uh, with a lot of, of um, technical solutions, a lot of security uh, behind that. Um, so this is a kind of, um, yeah, technical overview, very high over. Uh, the IDP is the, that's the core of the product. Um, it is a Spring-based application. Um, of course, if you use Axon, Spring is kind of the, well, very logical to, to use as well. Uh, it's Spring Boot based, um, and uh, we also have a lot of uh, different components around that. As you can see, that that yeah denotes I think that it's kind of a technical application with a lot of uh, in different interaction points. Uh, then, our customers. Well, yeah, these are uh, some of the customers that are using this product. Um, currently, we have about 90 million events, and the largest installation. Um, it's about one and a half million user accounts. So it's, I would say, quite a large, uh, large installation. Uh, the database is about 200 gigabytes and about uh, between 50,000 and 300,000 logins per day. Um, so how did we came to use Axon? What is our history with Axon? Um, we first started, well, I think four years ago with this application. Um, we heard of uh, CQRS and we were um, well, experimenting with it, finding out what it was, uh, but we didn't want to use a framework right away because we wanted to get to know, really get to know CQRS, right? And to see whether it would fit our needs. Um, so in that sense, we started small. 
uh, we didn't need all this, uh, all the, the advanced uh, features like replays or uh, event upcasters or uh, all this, all these, in, yeah, this interesting stuff. Um, so that's one of the lessons learned. Start small and simple, right? If you wanna um, wanna do something complex from the start, you will always get into a lot of pitfalls, and uh, you maybe forget about the core of your system. Um, that's also why we spend a lot of time on modeling. Uh, modeling our domain is also, uh, I think, in, in case of CQRS, of DDD, it's, it's very, really, really important. Because if you don't get that right, um, you cannot just throw away events when you're in production, right? That's going to yeah, cost you a lot of money. Um, so this thinking about the domain events is, is really important. About the granularity, of, uh, for, in, for once, that's really important. Um, you don't want to have them too uh, detailed, but you also don't want to have them not detailed enough because then you, you miss information that you probably would have needed or you might need in the future. Uh, for us that was, since everything is evolving around the user, um, we have a lot of yeah, user information, user details. Um, yeah, this was, I think this is one of, was one of the hard things uh, when starting with CQRS. How granular do you make your events? Um, that's also why I th we uh, asked uh, Allard to assist us in the beginning. And um, well, I think we, uh, he also helped us greatly with that in order to, um, well, to uh, um, make sure that we, we, did, we got it right, right. So that's, I think, also one of the, the takeaways is to um, ask for help. Especially when you start with something new, it costs you a lot of money and a lot of time in order to uh, waste um, yeah, or to get it wrong and you, in order to uh, let help someone help you that will actually um, benefit you. So that was our first iteration. Uh, we also um, wanted to, at the beginning, we had a Ruby front end and a Java back end, and we were sending commands from the Ruby front end to the Java back end, and we decided that it was too tightly coupled, and we ripped that out, and we basically built a monolith, which I don't think is a bad thing. Um, if you don't really need a microservices architecture, especially in the beginning, I don't think you should do that, right? Because it takes you a lot of time in order to um, make sure that you have a, all the infrastructure in place. Because with a microservices architecture, a lot of complexity is added. Because if you have a monolith, a, sim sim a simple uh, application within a simple single box, you don't have all the communication issues that you do have with microservices. Also, deployment is a lot easier with a monolith. Um, of course, there are downsides of a monolith. It's only scalable up to a certain point, but in the beginning, when you start, uh, we started with the Greenfield situation um, as a startup. Well, currently we're not a startup anymore, but um, we started with the Greenfield situation and um, with, a f with a very small team. If you have a small team, you don't want to dedicate people to um, having to look after all the infrastructure that you have, right? Um, that's also, I think, what Cass said. He, they started very big, and then in the end, when they realized, okay, we don't need everything that we have, we ripped everything that was unnecessary out, and we, we went back to the core. Because at the beginning, especially when a startup, you need to find uh, your business case, right? So you need to find out how you can make money. So we actually, I think, rebuilt the entire application three times uh, before we, are, we were actually at the point where we are now. Um, so, yeah, that is something uh, that I also want to give you. Uh, if you uh, are in a startup and considering CQRS, please start small and take it step by step. Um, so our second iteration, so to say, uh, is we wanted to use the more complex features of Axon, um, like replays, um, the event bus, or maybe a distributed event bus, um, and also the aggregate snapshots, which were kind of nice because then um, yeah, you only have intermediate rep representations of your aggregates, and it actually uh, is, is much uh, more um, uh, efficient with, with, re uh, with regards to performance. Um, and basically, um, we were yeah, a Java shop, so we were making ja Java applications. And we were looking at um, uh, frameworks uh, that could help us with CQRS, and that, and that moment in time, four years ago, I think Axon was the only, yeah, good choice that was there. Um, we looked at the, uh, the community around it, and at that point it was almost only Allard, because all the reply, <laughs> replies on the mailing list <laughs> were coming from Allard, uh, which was kind of funny. But um, Also, I think the fact that it was a Dutch, um, a Dutch 
framework, it also helped us uh, making the choice to, to go for Axon because we could easily uh, reach out and uh, ask for some help. So what were our benefits and challenges? Um, we had a number. Uh, since we are a, a security application, we um, needed to have some kind of an audit trail, right? Um, and in our case, I think for the Société Générale case, it's kind of, the si kind of similar, right? You really need to know what happened at one point in time, right? Customers, uh, when, when something goes wrong with login, uh, you want to be able to reconstruct what went wrong and reconstruct what steps were taken in order to, um, that lead it to this, um, this misbehavior or this, this abuse. Uh, so this is really important uh, reason why we went for CQRS, right? Because it really helps us uh, with this. It's actually, yeah, you get it for, for free, quote unquote. Um, another benefit was while building the application, um, the read model is very straightforward, right? You just have select star from where. That's the only thing that you do with your SQL queries. Uh, when you get into the point that you start doing joins, you think like, hey, I'm doing something wrong. Um, and that's where the whole transition or the mind transition comes into play with CQRS. Um, I think Kaz also mentioned it. Um, when start, starting to do CQRS, you really, you need to change your mindset. Um, it's not like, okay, I have a read model, a completely normalized read model. You need, really need to start thinking in denormalized read model or denormalized database, so to say. And data duplication is not bad because Axon helps you to make or keep it consistent. Um, and I think that is really important. Although that if you are growing and starting to use a distributed uh, event bus, etc., then things might or things will become more complex because um, events can get lost, uh, systems crash. So these, there are a lot of things that you then need to keep in mind uh, when you start doing distributed event bus or di distributed command bus for that matter, right? Um, so again, simplicity I think is key in the beginning because in the beginning you don't want to focus on all these complex details um, and also in the beginning you don't have a uh, big uh, test suite that can help you verify all these things, right? Yesterday, I, ha I was following the microservices training with, uh, with Sam Newman, and it was very interesting what he said. Like, yeah, we had a system at, one of our, one, uh, at a cable company, and uh, we found out that, or actually some of the customers called, they said that, yeah, we are uh, getting, uh, getting uh, um, yeah, there's money uh, drawn from our bank account, but we actually don't have a cable subscription. They was like, hmm, okay, that's interesting. So they started looking into their distributed event system, and they f found out that some of the events were getting lost. And then afterwards, they, uh, because then they thought like, okay, this might not be the only case where this happens, right? And they started looking further, and they found out that there were also a lot of users that actually had a subscription, but they didn't pay, right? And they were not calling, very strangely. <laughs> so. This is something that you need to keep in mind with a distributed, uh, with, yeah, with actually every distributed system, right? Communication is very, very important, and you really need to, uh, don't underestimate the complexity with that. <coughs> okay, um, then another very interesting point, I think uh, one of the benefits is analytics on the event stream. Um, well, basically, you have the very large number of, of events, like 90 million in one of the cases of our customers and um, you can do all kinds of analytics on that. Especially for security, this is very interesting because you can see, you can create a model and if the model evolves, and when the model evolves over time, you can still run the entire event stream in the, over that model to find out what the results are, what the differences are, and you can even say, find out whether there had been fraud in the past which you didn't detect in the first go because your model was not good enough, for instance, right? That's all kind of interesting stuff that you can do with, with Axon. Um, another thing is, like, if you have a lot of um, systems that are, uh, like, legacy systems in your, in your organization, you can very easily dispatch events to those legacy systems. Um, we also built another application, it was yeah, a side project, but that was actually in order to get rid of a legacy application, 
and we kind of mirrored that application, the mi mirrored that legacy application, and with the events we actually controlled that legacy application. So we could just say like, okay, um, the new uh, application was actually taken control, but we needed the state in the old application to be synchronized between our new and old application, and we used Axon or SQLRS for that in order to make sure that we dispatched events to that to that application in order to keep it up to date, which also is very nice. But again, then you have the, to think about what. Uh, when one of the events uh, is not properly handled, how do you deal with that, right? Uh, then the challenges. Um, one is, um, let's see how much time I have. 15 minutes. Um, one of the challenges that we are facing right now is the fact that we have a uh, application that is, or actually a security application which is installed at customers, right? So we don't have full control over the application. Um, for one thing, Customers are kind of scared with replays because, um, yeah, they don't know how the internals of the application work, and for them it's kind of like it's a black box, so they don't actually know exactly what they are doing. Um, that's one of the things that is, um, yeah, that plays plays a role, I think, and uh, it's kind of a, one of the challenges. Um, Another thing is, like I said, event replays are becoming time-consuming. When you have 90 million events and you need to all read all those events, and we currently only have a relational database, um, although in this case it's a very big database, but still there's downtime, and customers don't like downtime when they upgrade. Uh, another issue is, or issue might be, that customers uh, skip versions. They just go from version 1 to version 3 for instance, and they skip version two. And it might be that in version one, from version one to two, you had, uh, you added an event and, um, or you added an event handler, and you wanted to replay that, and in version three, you start using it. But if customers go from version one to version three, then they need this replay in order for the application to properly work. Um, that's all of, yeah, these are challenges that are kind of hard for us. And th that you need to take into account when choosing CQRS. So that's, that's kind of, um, well, that might be a problem um, um, in the future, but we de definitely need to tackle it. Another challenge, it's not specifically Axon related, but uh, we rely on uh, user interface slash HTML templates. Um, when, our customer, when a customer installs our product, they need to mo modify these templates uh, in order to, well, get the login screen that they want, in order to get um, the user registration screen that they want, which is for them an issue because they need to learn how it works because we force them to use a specific uh, kind of templating engine, et cetera, et cetera, right? So looking ahead, what are the things that uh, we might want to do in the future? Um, for one thing, I don't like it that Axon actually, uh, or Axon Exonic is uh, releasing an event store. Uh, this might be very interesting um, because we are, tend to start running into the limitation of rela relational databases, um, especially for the larger installations. For the smaller installations, this is not an issue. We, in, we in have looked at in the past at Mongo, uh, but we also find out, find out that our customers are kind of scared of Mongo, um, especially the, uh, the larger insurance companies. They don't have a lot of IT folks, right? So every new technical product that they want need to introduce it takes us uh, a lot of effort to introduce that. Um, we did it for Docker, but I'm really glad that we did it for Docker. We were one of the first, I think, for many of the customers where we, uh, that, that, try, try, that decided to buy us, we um, were the first Docker installation that they deployed. Um, but I'm really glad that, it, that we did it because it gives us a lot of benefits. Uh, but for relational databases, I think, Customers always have uh, like a MySQL or Postgres or Oracle or MS SQL. These kind of databases are very well known and they understand how they work, right? Um, so I think, yeah, the nice thing of the new event store is that it's, well, file-based. <laughs> every computer or every Linux server has a file system. So yeah, it's easy to install and hopefully also easy to run. <laughs> um, another thing, getting rid of the UI. Um, yeah, we basically already have a lot of uh, APIs, but um, it helps us, or it helps actually our customers to adopt our product more easily, right? So they can choose what, whatever uh, UI framework they want to use. 
Um, for instance, they, uh, the, the, the whole front-end world has changed a lot over the past years. Um, where, for instance, you have now single-page apps. We used to have uh, MVC uh, applications which, was, which relied on templates. And this basically, we cannot keep up with that, right? Um, we are always one step behind because it's a product. We need to make sure that everything is, um, is well tested, works properly, and there's a lot of work around that. Also, we need to document how it works, etc. right? So for us, I think uh, using REST APIs is, is, is much better. It helps our customers to, uh, well, basically they understand REST. They know how it works. So that, also, that already helps. Um, so that was actually my presentation. Are there any questions? Uh, I'll run around with a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> um, you mentioned something about uh, events, uh, replay, and yeah. versioning, and uh, the problem with skipping a version. <laughs> but I can also see a problem with not skipping a version. If, it's, if it, the, ver the version is there, it was the f events were set up with version 1, mm -hmm. and uh, you are now at f uh, version 10 yeah. over time. Uh, it may be that the events uh, stored at uh, version 1 are of no relevance and even confusion for version 10. Yes, that could be. <coughs> um, but what I was actually referring to is the fact that um, you introduce new functionality, and with Axon you have the possibility to gradually introduce new functionality, right? Because you can say, let's in version 1 of the application, you have... Um, um, a, a, f a view which is um, using like or which has the, all the database, all the, the, the consumer or the customer data, uh, which has its address, uh, which has uh, the date of birth, email address, phone numbers, etc., etc. But you actually, um, due to changes in the world, what never happens, but yeah, due to changes, you need to split that up, right? Because yeah, it's more efficient to have two different views. Uh, two different tables in the database to get that data from, for whatever reason. And then you can, in version two of your application, you say, okay, we already have those tables there, and you can, we can pre-fill them by running an, a, a replay on that, but we're actually not yet using that data, right? So we can already pre-run the, um, the replay without actually affecting the application itself. But when customers skip, uh, so, oh, sorry, and then in version 3 actually start using that, those new views, which are already filled. But if customers go from one, version 1 to version 3, you lose that. And they need to replay before, because otherwise the application start, uh, stops working. And that is something which is a challenge for us, because, yeah, Axon allows you to do this, but the way that our customers uh, install our product and use our product doesn't, right? So that's, there's a mismatch there. So that's a challenge. I haven't found a good solution yet, though. <laughs> I guess we'll discuss. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a challenge. <laughs> People with questions, please sit on the edges of your... <laughs> uh, you said that you, uh, with the domain design, it's very important to get it right. Yeah. Uh, but I can imagine that as a startup, you will have changes also in your domain design. How often does this happen, and how do you deal with that, with the uh, events associated with, and how much work does it mean? So that, ba that depends on what you need to change, right? If you want to add stuff, that's not really bad. If you start renaming or deleting stuff, then it gets more hairy, because you need to write upcasters, as they are called in Axon, because then a newer version of an event is not, cap not compatible with an older version of an event. Um, and that's where um, things well get a bit of a bit hairy because you need, especially for us, we're using uh, the XML format of events. We are, need to use XSL, XSLT transformations, um, but that's not well. It takes some time, um, but if you are, if you really think about it and really think things through, then it's not that bad. At, I would say I think we have written upcasters. Um, but one of the things that I want to uh, give you as another takeaway or another lesson learned is um, that you really should not throw away events, even in development, even when you are not in production yet, because you need to start learning how to deal with this, because this will also happen in production. And if you're not learning how to do that, then in production you are going to screw up, basically. 
right? And so, okay, if there is a real, really uh, good reason to um, to delete the event, then you can do it. But you take into account that you also screw your colleagues because they need to clean their database. Uh, because they need to also remove the events that you have deleted in the application, right? So that's also something that uh, need, you need to take into account. And that's, well, there is a learning curve with Axon in, or with actually CQRS in that sense, right? More questions? Anyone else? Well, early lunch. Uh, unfortunately not. Well, oh. no, two, two reasons. There's <laughs> another question and there's another <laughs> session before lunch. <laughs> Um, so you mentioned downtime during event replay. So yeah. is it is it feasible to do any uh, any downtime when you have 90 million events? Uh, how long does it take to replay such amount of events? Uh, that all depends on the database that the customer has, right? Um, if they have a simple MySQL cluster, then it will take a long time. But if they have a big Oracle cluster, it will take much less time because that cluster is capable of of, of serializing or reading much more events uh, per second. Um, but I think the problem for us is the fact that we must wait for the replay to be finished um, because the number of events will just keep on growing, right? It's not that you will throw away events. Um, well, eventually maybe you, wa you want to do that, but the events that you need in order to, uh, to, to build the new, agri or the new uh, view of your table, of your uh, new view might uh, need very old events still. Right, so that's something that uh, the problem is not in the fact that how long it would take to, in order to replay all those events, but the problem is in the fact that we need to wait for the, the replay to be finished in order to continue. Um, and I think for us it now it would cost like an hour or two in order to replay. Right? It's not that big of an issue, but I think to be two hours out of air for some of our customers is not really nice. They can still schedule it during... Uh, like an out of office hours, like during the night, but I think this is not going forward. It will, the problem will will only become bigger, right? So it's not something that it's not a future proof model. And I guess a lot of the big enterprises nowadays they force you to patch in exactly the right order, right? <laughs> Otherwise, there's no support. Yeah. But okay, let's not go. So that's the uh, last the last question for now. What stops you from running the replay before the uh, before going down for a? Uh, deployment? Um, <coughs> good question. Um, we could do such things, but then we would also need, already need to update one of the nodes of the, uh, of the application in order to actually do the replay, right? Or in order to, um, um, yeah, maybe we should then make a component which already is capable of doing that, re or ha which has the new view of, a, of the database and which is able to fill that view. That could be an, o that could be an option that you already prepare it before you actually go live, yeah. Okay, I think uh, time's up right now. So um, please give a warm hand to, uh, to Stein, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>